Uh, we're good? Okay. Good morning, everybody. Please have a seat. Make yourselves comfortable. We're going to have a little fun today. We're going to talk about the transition from 2D to 3D NAND. I don't really want to call it a State of the Union address. We haven't really had one of those. Uh, but I promise you it won't be fake news. So my name is Walter Hinton. I have one of the greatest jobs in the world. I get to represent Western Digital's portfolio of device products, ranging all the way from the fastest of the fast SSDs to the highest capacity HDDs on the planet. And for, uh, for my team, we're really kind of a bunch of data champions. And we live above the device level. So we talk more about use cases and how to apply technologies and which is the right tool for the job. Uh, lots of companies have a device or a few devices. And you know the old adage, when you have a hammer, everything looks like a nail. Well, the good news is our company can bring a toolkit to your organizations to help you build, scale, and do it in a way that's cost effective. So the typical legal mumbo jumbo, but during this section, I want to take just a minute and give you a little bit more introduction to Western Digital, a company that you may know from your trip to Fry's or Best Buy. You see WD devices sitting on the shelves. Uh, but did you know that the SanDisk devices that also sit on those shelves are part of Western Digital as well. And maybe the thing that you least know is this, HGST. It really doesn't stand for anything. It originally was IBM Global Storage Technologies, so IGST, the inventor of the very first hard drive. In 1956, the RAMAC was rolled out, weighing about a ton and holding a few gigabytes of data. Think about it, 1956, a ton, and let's call it five gigabytes of data. HGST has evolved over time to the point now where we're shipping 14 terabytes in three and a half inch drive form factor. So imagine over the years, the level of innovation and technology that we've been able to bring to the table and I'll throw out something a little scary. We'll call it digital Armageddon. What happens if everything Western Digital, WD, SanDisk, and HGST all fail at the same time? Just instantly, you know, some giant magnetic wave, some solar flare. Guess what? There'd be no stock market. You wouldn't get a paycheck. Most of your phones wouldn't work. It would be truly digital Armageddon. So what you'll see with our company is an approach to the market of no wine before its time. We don't want to just be the first, we want to be the best. And for us, best means that things never break and you never have to experience digital Armageddon. So today we're gonna have a little fun. We're gonna talk about hair, we're going to talk about suburbs. We're going to talk about skyscrapers, all in the context of what's going on in the world of NANT. By 2020, 44 zettabytes of data will be created. If you have a one terabyte device, that's 44 trillion devices required to meet this demand by 2020. There are really three pillars. I think this is a famous quote by Scott McNeely. There are three pillars to our world. Storage, compute, and networking. So I may be the low one on the totem pole, maybe the most least interesting, but absolutely critical to how you operate your businesses. Everything is generating data. You hear lots about IoT. You hear about autonomous cars. But let's just pick on autonomous cars for a moment. A single autonomous vehicle generates a gigabyte per second. At best, the network 
that allows cars to communicate in an autonomous way is running at a gigabit per second. So we've got like eight times more stuff that we're collecting than we can possibly store. So you see caching tiers, you see gateway technologies, and of course then in the cloud, you have to process, push back intelligence, and store the important stuff out there at the edge so that things can avoid collisions, park for you, take your car and park it when you go to the movies and have it come back and pick you up when you're done. And it's all about the generation of data. But the fact is, we don't keep everything we create. In fact, I delete a lot of stuff I create, in part because I'm a marketing guy and most of it's garbage. But at the same time, uh, what we see is that we're moving into the zettabyte era. And over a five-year horizon between 2015 and 2020, we're going to see a five times increase in the amount of data we actually store. Not throw away, but actually store. It's a huge amount. So how do we address it? Well, I talked about if you have a hammer, everything looks like a nail. Um, you can certainly use hard drives, you can certainly use flash, but let's dig into where we are today with flash technologies. Pretty much everything that's in the data center right now is based on what we call 2D or planar NAND. And as we have advanced our technologies to improve density and lower cost, we have incredible lithography technology. So I don't have enough hair to actually want to pull one out, but if you think about a human hair, a human hair is more or less 100 nanometers, and we're working with lithography at 15 nanometers. The technology behind it is amazing. The factories are fascinating to tour. It's become very much uh, a robotic-based approach, simply because humans have a hard time working at that level of granularity. So now you'll see that we're moving from a 2D or two-layer cell to a three-layer cell to a quad-layer cell, and you run into trade-offs. As we increase capacities, we also impact endurance. There is no Moore's Law, no more Moore's Law for 2D NAND. We have reached a point where 15 nanometers is about as tight as we can squeeze lines onto wafers. And it's about electrons. Electrons are kind of like puppies. You can train them, and they'll do what they're supposed to do, but when that mailman comes, your puppy's going to go crazy and bark at the mailman and jump around and not behave properly. And that's what happens with electrons as we try and squeeze more and more data, more and more bits into uh, smaller form factors. So this is a good example. There is no, no normal distribution now of how electrons behave at these very, very tight ranges. And as we drive to even tighter uh, design specifications, this proximity effect or the behavior of the electron jumping from one cell to another uh, becomes really problematic. So what is one to do? Well, first of all, we'll start with what's happened over uh, a series of many, many years in the NAND world. The very first single layer NAND technologies came out at about a gigabyte. Today, we see NAND products shipping in the four, six, I've got competitors out there that are talking 60 terabytes in a single three and a half inch form factor. Over the past 20 years, we have been able to improve capacity and drive NAND cost down 50,000 times. So I was actually part of the acquisition of Virident 
by HDST a few years ago. And when I first started at Verdant, we were selling single layer cell NAND technology for $8 a gigabyte. Today, under a buck. So you can see dramatic reductions in NAND and in NAND we trust. So what to do about this proximity effect? What to do about misbehaving electrons or bad puppies? Well, right now, this is what it looks like. You've got a substrate, you've got your control gate, and basically we just lay it flat. What if we turn it on its side and we go to something that looks more like a vertical design where now we are able to stack and create in the same form factor dramatically increased densities, minimal impact on performance with triple layer cell. Quad layer cell, maybe not so much. You may not get kind of the read and write throughputs that you hope for, but with triple layer cell, you absolutely will. And our approach is a little bit different. So there are folks who are in this business making 3D NAND where basically they have taken this approach of I'll just stack 2D planar NAND one on top of another. We've taken a different approach we call monolithic. And we now have our entire charge trap layer aligned across 64 layers of NAND die. So there's intelligence, there's reliability, there's performance, and proximity effect is now back under control. I said we're gonna talk about the burbs and the city. Think about it just like this. Literally on this side is good old fashioned planar land, NAND. Over here, we start to stack that all the way to 64 layers, but we change that charge trap so that it scales vertically with the stacks of, uh, of NAND. We call it BIX technology, and uh, BIX is, I think, at this point, going to be representative of the most reliable and performant NAND on the marketplace. And we believe that we can continue to scale this out. About three weeks ago or four weeks ago, we announced uh, for edge technology, so for embedded, industrial, connected home, automotive, uh, SD cards, as well as embedded NAND uh, with 64 layers so that we can start to increase the amount of capacity that you might keep in that autonomous vehicle. At the same time, this approach should allow us to scale for multiple generations into the future so that we can continue now on the path of improving capacity, improving performance, and driving down cost. If anybody's had to make a big purchase of SSDs over the past year, you've probably seen that the predictions of the cost curve of NAND basically going to zero uh, are far from true. You're probably paying a 20% premium compared to what you paid in uh, late 15, early 20, and most of 2016. And that's simply because there's not enough NAND to meet all of your demand. We can't build it fast enough. The other folks who make NAND can't build it fast enough. And as we retool our factories to move from 2D to 3D, it is a complex and very difficult process. So again, no wine before it's time, you'll see us start to introduce enterprise class SSDs based on 3D NAND, but with the commitment to quality that our company has had over the years, the fear of digital Armageddon, we wanna make sure that what we ship you is going to work, is going to last, and you can just put it in and forget about it, which is how storage really should work. So I, I wanted to share that because there's been a lot of misnomers about how cost curves look. And fact is, we're not gonna see storage go to zero in the form of hard drives or in the form of NAND. And there's a stretch here um, for maybe even the rest of the year as we retool the factories where we have a supply demand uh, imbalance. 
Your needs are greater than what we can produce. I'll also say one other thing about this, and that is, even if everybody in the NAND business could produce at 100% capacity and every single die that comes off the line meets all of our tolerance specifications, there will still never be enough NAND to replace hard drives. So the dream of all flash data center, I preached it eight years ago, seven years ago, six years ago, and then I was indoctrinated into Western Digital and I learned the reality, which is there's no way we can produce enough. So as much as you might like spinning media to go away, it's probably not gonna happen in, uh, during the time before I retire. So there are some advantages to having control over the food chain, right? From the largest production site in the world with our partner Toshiba, assembly that we do, as well as the first integrated wafer to full-on SSD plant in the world, we have control over this entire food chain, which means we can control quality, which means that when we have dye that are not 100% within tolerance, we actually take a bunch of that that's outside of spec and we put it in a third-party market. So if you're buying from companies who aren't vertically integrated and you're buying SSDs from those companies, just ask about how they got their NAND and who it comes from, because there's really only two places it can come from. And if it came from us and it doesn't have our name on it, it's probably outside of our tolerance specifications. I wanna do one more thing, which is to talk a little about how we think about the market. Uh, my friends at Seagate, and by the way, I live in Colorado and hang out at the same Starbucks as all the Seagate guys and ladies, uh, so we overhear each other's conversations, uh, occasionally play golf competitively with each other. And they talked about market segmentation around interface type, right? So SATA, SAS, uh, NVMe, or PCIe. We think about it a little bit differently because again, we have this entire toolbox. So over here in the edge, we have a whole set of technologies for embedded, industrial, connected home, automotive. In the client and compute area, uh, GTEC is actually a Western Digital brand as well for any of you prosumers who are heavy into photography or video. Um, GTEC is, is one of the top players in that space. And then of course, when you go to Fry's or Best Buy, uh, You'll see WD blue, you'll see WD black, you'll see WD purple for surveillance. Um, you'll see SanDisk products as well. And uh, if you're ready to move from a hard drive to in, in your laptop to an SSD, I highly recommend you do it. I don't even care what brand you use. It's a, it's a huge difference maker uh, for anybody who's a power compute user. And then in the data center, we actually do more than just provide devices. Yes, we have a wide, wide range. We have SATA, we have SAS, we have NVMe, um, but we also have technology at rack scale. So a good example is a product we call the Active Archive. This is a little over three petabytes in a single rack and leverages erasure coding or object storage. So no longer do we deal with, as, as, as hard drives get bigger, RAID rebuild times get longer. And even with RAID rebuild assist technology that we've put into our products, it can still be a nightmare. So taking advantage of object storage, taking advantage of erasure coding, you can move to a model called fail in place. And what that means is you don't have to have people on roller skates running up and down, skating up and down the data center, replacing drives when they go bad. With erasure coding, it simply spreads it so wide that when there is a problem, the drive will identify itself as it's bad, 
And you just set up a maintenance window and you can schedule that. You can do that once a month if you want because the erasure coating will span the drives and ensure that you have consistent reliability. So if you are one of these people, if you're a software developer, if you're a software architect, if you're a data center architect, um, please come talk to the smart folks. Please come talk to our team of data champions and we can go into a lot more detail, but especially at, at this event where open is what it's all about, you have choice. You have the power of choice with Western Digital. Thank you very much. We're going to do a drawing now for an Apple Watch.